You've waited six weeks for this little update and the Red Sea Max Dino is still here. However, the tank has never looked worse. I've had a coral death, but on the upside, my dream coral for the collection is arriving this morning. So let's get stuck into this update. You've guessed it, it's been a while. Let's roll those titles. It's never a straightforward journey. And my most recent issue over the last few weeks is cyanobacteria. Now I did document this on my channel about five months ago and I had a similar issue. But this channel is all about being honest. I know my Instagram shows some really nice pictures, but I have a horrible, ugly tank again with cyanobacteria. So I'm gonna get you off the sand, let you have a little look at what I'm talking about and you can see for yourselves. I'm gonna change the lights as well up to white so you can also get a good look. Why do you keep your sand bed so white? Well, there you go. It ain't white anymore. Uh, it's covered in cyanobacteria. Now this stuff is primitive life form, so it is um, actually a sign of a healthy tank, to believe it or not, but it looks absolutely horrendous uh, it comes in different colors i've got the red version but it also comes in blue green and black i believe um i prefer black because it would actually match the tank a bit better but i've got the red red slime now over this side here is where it's really bad so get your uh i mean look at the state of that <laughs> i do want to be honest with your ethers and show you what it looked like before any work's been done on it uh, but as you can see the rock works quite nice now in terms of the corals they're not really being affected by the cyano so i don't want to panic too much but there is one here that is not liking it which is this blasto moose so the little red blaster there that's that is looking a bit sulky but yeah there it is so it's not looking good and what that calls for is a nice biscuit just to cheer you up after you've got cyanobacteria. Now, not many people know what causes cyanobacteria, really. Um, I mean, the common science is that it's triggered by uh, high nitrates and high phosphates. It can also be triggered by low nitrates and low phosphates. Uh, and it might also be triggered by... Um, an imbalance in your nitrates and phosphates so ideally you should be going for the 100 to 1 ratio so if your nitrates are 5 your phosphates should be 0 0.05 but if you followed this channel on Jay's Real Rave you know that my phosphates are all over the shop now with this tank I've not had too many serious issues but the one thing that I'm constantly battling is phosphates and how they fluctuate so we're going to have a little look at the phosphates and the nitrates see where they sit before we get on to tackle this problem but it looks absolutely horrendous now so out of all the corals in this tank including the anemone up there my clowns seem to want to host the rainbow trachophilia you see it there i don't know if you can see the female just pecking at it and just really annoying it. Now, has anybody else got clownfish that like hosting or thinking about hosting a rainbow trachophilia? Because that's what mine are doing here. Leave it alone. It's one of my favorite corals, that is. It's never easy owning a reef tank, is it? So I've just tested my uh, phosphates on the Hannah Checker Ultra Low Range and my phosphates currently sit at 0.10. So that is, well that's quite a healthy number to be honest i'm not too displeased with that i'm quite happy with that so phosphates are okay so let's have a little look at the nitrates now yes i haven't upgraded yet to the high range nitrate checker i'm still on the ultra low range one so let's have a look at what the nitrates are on this little red c max nano leave that coral alone you two so instead of you seeing me do a nitrate uh, test, if you haven't seen uh, how I do a nitrate test, then check out my uh, Hannah nitrate test video on YouTube on this channel. You can find it there. Far more interesting is this little uh, tail spot blenny. Uh, much more interesting than waiting for me to do the nitrate test. Um, and even he gets bored waiting for the results. But there he is, swimming about. I think he wants his dinner. 
so the nitrate check has taken that long I've had a new delivery of stuff so let's do a little bit of unboxing bits and bobs that I've purchased here so the first bit what's in here we've got uh, a bit more so as you know I dose foundation elements um, ABC so I needed to top up my alkalinity uh, fluid so I've gone for the 500 bottle 500 ml bottle I think it was 14 pound on eBay just to top up my reservoir there for my alkalinity uh, so that's that one what else we got really splashing out here that's the thing with reefing, you just have to keep stocking up. Now this uh, this next one is for tackling the cyanobacteria. So there is the patient route, which is water change, clean the sand bed and replenish the bacteria. Now I've gone for Dr. Tim's Eco Balance. I've never um, used it myself. I'm, I don't even know anybody else that's used it to be honest. So I'm hoping it's good. Adds friendly and supportive bacteria to, back to maintain a balanced reef blocks out on friendly bacteria 100% natural so hopefully that can restock the friendly bacteria and tackle the cyano problem and out compete the cyano so that's uh, the second thing that I bought and the third thing which is not very exciting really is but I do like to use it the jury's out on this stuff but I've bought some a little bit of <laughs> there's loads here isn't it I bought let me just move the camera back a bit there you go. If you want a professional reefing channel, you've come to the wrong place. Uh, so I use Simek uh, filter floss, and I use that in the return chamber of the Nano for two reasons. One, it keeps the noise down on the return pump, and two, it just kind of polishes that water before it returns back to the display. So I've just uh, replenished a bit of stock with my uh, KH alkalinity and my filter floss, but this one. Dr. Tim's Eco Balance. Let's see if this stuff is any good. Right, so let's see what this little egg has to say about my nitrates in the tank. So currently the nitrates are sitting at 3.57 ppm, which again is is pretty is pretty good. I'm quite happy with those levels. Phosphate is slightly high. But nitrates, I just need a bit more nitrate. I'd like my nitrates to be between 5 and 10 ppm. So, let's get on to tackling this cyanobacteria. The first thing I'm going to do is reinstate... Oh, sorry about the reflection here. I'm going to reinstate the Jabo powerhead to increase the flow around the tank. So that's been put back in this morning, trying to... Uh, increase the flow around the tank now one thing I have noticed when you put more power into the tank more flow um, the snails uh, in particular conch snails become less active so this is kind of a bittersweet because the conch snails would turn over the sand bed but they don't like the high flow and then the high flow will eradicate any dead spots now cyanobacteria loves a dead spot so if you can kind of get rid of your dead spots that might help so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to vac this sand and see how we get on with that try and lift out as much of this cyanobacteria as possible and then we're going to add more beneficial bacteria in the fight against this cyano to try and outcompete the cyanobacteria so let's crack on it's all happening today another delivery and let's have a little look at this one when you see these styrofoam boxes you know you're in for a good day because it means another coral is arriving now those that follow the channel know that i'm a massive fan of torch corals just because of their flow their movement also their ease of looking after them um, and you'll also know that two months ago roughly i purchased this stunning hellfire master coral with golds, purples and green tips and that one has settled in really well into the tank. Now I picked this up from a guy on Instagram called Northern Reefer. This guy has some of the best torch corals in the UK. Now if you don't follow him, get following him on Instagram. I'll put a link in the description. About a week ago he fragged his holy grail coral into single heads and I'm not going to miss that an opportunity like that. So in here we've got the coral that I've always wanted, a holy grail. Now let's have a little look and see what's inside the box. 
so there she is uh, just temperature acclimating at the moment uh, using the floating method I'm gonna leave it in there for 20 to 30 minutes just to float about and get temperature acc acclimated then we're gonna give it a little dip whilst all that's happening we're gonna vac the sand bed add some bacteria and then think about jiggling these corals around uh, because I've now got uh, five five I don't know how many I've got now I've got five torch corals I've got the dragon soul I've got a hellfire I've got an indo green huge one there seven heads and then there is the uh, hellfire so I am gonna have to make space for this new uh, holy grail coral so I'm just down here in the engine room and uh, you know that I use the D&D doser, the P4 doser and these are my TMC uh, dosing racks, magnesium, calcium and alkalinity. Now you'll notice that the alkalinity is very low now. I dose uh, 3.8 mil of alkalinity per day which isn't much but um, it does obviously go down over time so here is my replenishing of the stock there it is so I'm just going to pour that in to there nothing exciting to watch really but there we go just top that up now one thing you need to do once you've topped it up is go back onto the app for the doser just to let it know what the levels are uh, now you've topped up the container uh, it's really cool because it actually gives you a warning when you need to reorder so that's how I knew that my alkalinity was dropping a little bit low uh, you can also see here my sticker collection these are my favorite uh, Instagrammers and youtubers uh, who thank you very much uh, ladies and gents who have sent me stickers over the last nine months it does mean uh, a hell of a lot to get these stickers and it makes the cabinet look really cool and I've got a new addition to the uh, sticker collection so a huge shout out and thank you to Northern Reefer UK who has kindly sent me uh, his uh, latest sticker as well so a big shout out to Northern Reefer UK I will put a link in the description of this video make sure you follow him on Instagram he's got a really great tank on there with some beautiful corals so a uh, bit of maintenance done, alkalinity topped up, we'll update the app uh, and that little sticker there looks really nice addition to the collection. Now this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't ever leave your reef tank for any period of time. So this is my orange, ultra orange from gear plate, it was an absolutely stunning uh, coral and I'll just put a picture on the screen so you can see how it looked in its in its heyday uh, I went away uh, with the family for three days and during that time it became buried in the sand and then blocked out the light and then when I returned I was like oh um, I think I'm missing a coral and I couldn't find it for a couple of days it was actually buried under the sand and the rock work just give you a little update so after vacuuming the sand which looks a lot better now um, I've had to replace the water that was siphoned out so I've done about a 10% water change so if it's looking a little bit cloudy that's that's why um, I've also which has been a bit painstaking uh, had to use a little pipette dropper here and I've just been sucking out little bits of cyanide that's still on the sand bed so this is going to be a it's going to be a long battle it's going to be a long battle every time I see a little bit of cyano just trying to siphon that out but also making sure that I don't destabilize the salinity. Um, there might be one little casualty there in the middle of the screen right now. That's my gorgeous red blasto from Prestige Reef, but it's really not looking good. Um, and I think that's because of the cyano outbreak that I've had. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you posted on the channel. Uh, fingers crossed for the little blasto, hopefully it pulls through. So next step is the bacteria now this is going to be a major alliance in this fight against cyano let's get the good stuff out competing the bad bacteria in terms of cyano so let's get some of that into the tank and see what difference it makes over the next days and weeks so dr tim's eco balance now you probably know that i cycle my tank with dr tim so i quite like his products but i've never used eco balance so this is for tanks that are already set up and cycled uh, it's to restore friendly 
and supportive bacteria to maintain a balanced reef 100% natural and blocks out unfriendly bacteria so that's what I'm trying to aim for here the uh, cyanobacteria is an unfriendly bacteria so hopefully it can outcompete that now just having a little look at the destructions here um, helps to restore an eco balance impact on positive water quality um, 100 percent natural probiotic bacteria and that, that's the stuff you have in yogurt yeah probiotic bacteria to restore a balance and maintain a clean balanced and healthy aquarium now it says here to for best results turn off the skimmer for 8 to 12 hours if the water turns cloudy turn on as soon as possible use two caps for every 10 gallons of water and use once per week to restore that natural balance now uh, one thing I've learned with reefing is always go for half the dose uh, because for some reason it just seems to work better so it's saying two capfuls for 10 gallons now this is a 20 gallon nano well oh, there's the uh, holy grail settling in nicely this is a 20 gallon nano so I'm gonna go for two caps one in the display and one in the sump and then uh, top that up in a week's time okay let's get it so Dr. Tim's eco balance has gone in. We've put a cap in the display and a cap in the sump. I'm just thinking here, if I'd have used this from like month two onwards, maybe I wouldn't have had the cyano in the first place. So it's probably worthwhile. I've got loads here. This does 240 gallons. So it's absolutely loads. So I can use that once a week, uh, two capfuls, and that's going to be really beneficial to the reef just to maintain its health and hopefully get rid of the issue. But I'll let you know how it gets on over the coming weeks and months and see how we're dealing with it. Right, notice there the holy grail? Let's get that onto the reef. What the hell have I just done? So my dream torch coral, the holy grail, as I've been trying to take it out of the container and attach it from those horrible little frag plugs that I really hate. Um, my heavy hands and I've split the skeleton into three separate bits. <sighs> This is the problem with this hobby, it's so up and down. So I'm going to glue its skeleton together with a bit of reef glue. I'm going to putty the base. And hopefully, in the next three or four days, this coral can actually survive. But I'm absolutely gutted, to say the least. So there it is. Hopefully you're still watching and seeing, uh, seeing my latest addition to the collection of corals. This is the Holy Grail Coral uh, Torch Coral. I've always wanted one and this one is absolutely popping. Bright yellow uh, with green accents on the, uh, on the polyps and then it's got some beautiful bluey white uh, tips to it as well. So I'd like to say a huge thank you to my beautiful wife. Uh, who bought me this torch coral she always knows that i wanted one of these uh, so she bought it as a gift for my anniversary um, i float acclimated it and then i dipped it in a tiny bit of iodine just to uh, settle it in and uh, now it's acclimating to the light and it's acclimating to the water parameters and the flow so i've just bobbed it on the sand bed uh, but hopefully it'll settle in in the next few days to a week and I can give you another update. If you'd like to see how the Holy Grail coral gets on and where its final position will be on the scape, then keep following the channel and I'll keep you updated on its progress. But I am so happy that I've got this one in the collection. Absolutely stunning. That holy grail coral, uh, torch coral, it's a little stunner. I've waited so long to get one of those in my collection and a big thank you to my beautiful wife. That is the best anniversary present you've ever bought me uh, and I'm really pleased I've managed to get one in the collection. To follow the journey of the Holy Grail Torch Coral, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you've enjoyed the update, which you've waited ages for, please give me a thumbs up. It really does help. Now, what's the plan as we reach the October 2021 one year mark? Well, there's two more corals on this wish list. One SP and I'd also like an LPS Scully so I'm keeping an eye out for that as well in fact no there's three because I've remembered another one as well a Goniopora uh, no not Goniopora 
Gorgonian. That's it, a Gorgonian coral. I want to add one more fish to this little Red Sea Max Nano as well. And the blood red shrimp is due a new friend. So keep following. If you want some more reefing chat, join us on a Friday evening, 8 p.m. Uh, on Bearded Reef, Moggs' Aquarium and Fish Palace. Links are in the description below. But thank you. If you're still watching, it means a huge amount. Thank you for watching. You take care. Have a lovely summer holiday. And hopefully in a week's time, we've got another update on the Red Sea Max Dano. Take care. Bye-bye.